Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of PTV FC. We're on our ninth episode now. One more till double digits. Exciting news, exciting news. But today, I am your host, Ryan Johnson, and I am joined by Jimmy Bliss and Louis Pasquale. How are you both doing today? Doing really well, Ryan. Excited to get this episode in, and we have a lot of good things to talk about and a little bit of a different episode, so we'll get to that in a few minutes. All right, I'm doing good. I'm excited for it. We haven't really talked about this topic yet, but it's soccer-related, and I'm ready to get into it. Yeah, you guys both hinted at it. And today we are going to be talking about college soccer. You know, uh, the men's soccer team has really been killing it this year. Um, they, they're they currently ranked 15th in the country, and they've just been doing great all season long. Their next three games are against UConn, who are going to be, they're going to be playing around an hour from our recording, actually, uh, Providence and Villanova. And uh, my question to you guys is, can they go undefeated in those three games and uh, really get some momentum going into the Big East tournament? Well, I think it's going to be hard to go undefeated in those three games, but unbeaten, I definitely think that that's something within the realm of possibility for the Seton Hall team. Today against UConn, I'm hoping they can get a win. There's no easy games in the Big East as it's such a challenging conference, but hopefully against UConn, this is a game where they will be able to uh, to come out victorious and they'll be able to take this momentum and they'll be able to move on. And then Providence on the road is going to be hard because they were ranked, uh, I believe, earlier in the season as high as 13 even. Uh, so they're not a bad team at all. So that's going to be a bit hard on the road. I think if you if Seton Hall has to come out with a draw that game, I'd be perfectly fine with that. I think they have obviously the caliber and they have a chance of winning that game. But again, this late in the season, a draw would be just fine with them. And then Villanova, who always seems to put up a fight against Seton Hall, I think I think they'll be able to win that game. But again, it's not going to be easy as as uh, all these all these biggest games are not easy. The CBJ Teebling for me has to continue playing at a high level. He does everything. He heads the ball. He, he he finds ways to put it in the back of the net. He chest volleys it to himself and then goes bar down and gets on Sports Center. So he does everything. I'm excited to see him throughout the re- these next few games and then into the Big East tournament and hopefully even further. Yeah, Louis. See, I think that Seton Hall does have a really good opportunity to go undefeated over these next three games, and I think they will. So these three teams that they're playing, I know you, you mentioned that they are pretty good teams, but I'm not really scared by either one of them. They already beat Providence. 2-1 earlier this season and I was actually on the call covering that game and we looked very very good in that game I was also on the call against the Villanova game and again Seton Hall dominated that game and they only ended up winning 1-0 but it was a truly dominant performance they drew away to UConn who played very defensively and it was a 0-0 wall uh 0-0 draw excuse me it did feel like a 0-0 loss but it was a 0-0 draw and so these three teams are pretty good, but I do think that Seton Hall does have a leg up on them. So if you just look at surely the goals scored and the goals conceded for these three teams, well, the four teams, because we're going to include Seton Hall in this. And Seton Hall is 6-1-3 and three with their record, and they scored 15 goals and conceded nine. So they're a very high-scoring team, and their defense has been pretty good, but recently they've been giving up a little bit too many goals for – my liking but they're usually a pretty solid defense providence has 10 goals scored and conceded four they sit at a four two and one record and then villanova has only scored four goals this year conceded 15 and yukon even worse three goals this season and conceded five so these teams haven't been able to score as much as seton hall so i don't see a reason how they can slow down the seton hall attack I know guys like CJ Wing, JP Marin, James Boot, and Sundal, all four of these guys have been really, really big for the Seton Hall team. I do think that they're going to go on and potentially win these three games and definitely get a lot of momentum going to the Big East tournament, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a few minutes. But I really do like the Pirates' chances in these three games. Yeah, you know, I, I got to agree with both of you guys here. Uh, I definitely think they have – the opportunity to go uh, uh, undefeated win their next three games. Um, I, I do think the Providence game is going to be their hardest. Uh, Jimmy, I feel like you kind of wrote Providence off a little bit. Um, and I, I got to say, Providence is a really solid team. You know, they've been in and out of the top 25 all season for a reason. You know, uh, they're, they're definitely pretty solid. I'm not too concerned about Villanova. You know, they looked pretty dominant in their win against Villanova earlier this year. 
and UConn, if they don't, even if they park the bus, really, uh, I think they're at Owen T. Carroll Field now uh, against UConn. They should be really looking to take it to um, the Huskies today instead of being at Storrs, Connecticut, um, looking to defend their home pitch. So I'm not too worried about UConn, but I think the biggest game for this Pirates team is Providence for sure, and it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But, Jimmy, you hinted at it a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about the Big East tournament coming up. You know, they're currently second in the Big East division, Big East East division, sorry, uh, only behind Georgetown. Marquette is first in the Big East Midwest division, uh, and they're also ranked. But, um, you know, with the Big East tournament coming up, you know, how far can this team go? They've really done well this season, and uh, it's it's the best season of – pirate soccer that we've seen in a very long time so it should be interesting to see how far they can go so i'm mr optimism here ryan and i do think that the pirates can go all the way with this men's team i have not seen a single thing to be concerned about with this men's team apart from maybe their defense recently but they've been winning they've been wrong they haven't lost any games apart from the one game against georgetown who are the reigning national champions so that is absolutely a fine game to lose by me so this team the only one that stands in their way is Georgetown, I think. And in the two meetings, Georgetown has taken four points off Seton Hall, winning 2-1 in overtime and drawing 1-1. But Louie and I were in the building for that game against Georgetown, the 1-1 draw. And they really went toe-to-toe for them with them for the 110 minutes. And they looked better than them during some stretches. I really think that Georgetown got away with the, win, uh, with the draw there. I think that Seton Hall definitely should have won. They had opportunity after opportunity to take the lead. They had an open goal that they missed. They had a few headers that they could have scored, a few other shots here and there. So I do think that Georgetown's the only one that can really, maybe they're a little bit more talented, but Seton Hall does have a lot of heart. But then just like you said earlier, Ryan, I want to highlight Providence a little bit. They may be tough if they play against Seton Hall because they're very, very defensive as they've only conceded four goals this year. They play a little bit of a low block, try to keep the goals conceded to a minimum. They match up very, very well against Seton Hall this year. And Seton Hall won one nothing, And again, very, very tough game with the goal coming from Rahe Jarvie off of a corner header. But I do think that this Seton Hall team does have a lot of talent. They have talent in every aspect of the game, starting with their goalie. And their defense is very good as well with Maurice Williams. Then they have James Boot, who's my personal favorite player on the team, who takes all the set pieces. He is really good at assisting. He can even score a few goals when need be. The man from England is just all over the field. He has an engine. Then up top, J.P. Marin and C.J. Tiebling. That combination is deadly. So just a few players to highlight there. Really, really gives me a lot of confidence with this team going forward. And I do think that if given the right opposition, this team can definitely win the Big East. Yeah, I agree with you, Jimmy, 100%. I think best case scenario is that this team goes out, they defeat Georgetown, they defeat Marquette, whatever team stands in their way, and they win the Big East, which would punch their ticket to the um, the, the Cup, the 48-team College Cup, I believe it's called. That tournament, they get to that via winning the Big East. But I think worst case scenario is they do well in the Big East. They don't secure the championship for the Big East but then they're still able to make that tournament as they're ranked in the top 25 of the nation. And thus I would assume that they have enough power and prowess to get into that tournament via their ranking. But as you said, Jimmy, they have, they really do have players at all levels. I mean, we always, I feel like every time we talk about Seton Hall, we have to talk about Johannes Pex because he's a defender, but he feels like a midfielder or a winger because he's able to defend really, really nicely. And then he'll go up and help with the offense. And that's so imperative because as we saw in the game that we were at the Georgetown game, it was a draw, unfortunately, for Seton Hall, but Johannes Pex was the one that was able to run up the field, take the space, and then throw in a nice cross to Tiebling. I believe it was Tiebling. Uh, no, it was not Tiebling. It was, oh, I'm going to forget who it was now. Regardless, he was able to throw in a nice cross, and it was finished at the far post really, really nicely, and that's the reason why Seton Hall drew is because of Johannes Pex. And that's just at the defense, as you said, Marin and Tiebling up top doing really, really well good partnership and they're producing a lot. So I, I think the Seton Hall team is on the lookout for other teams. And they also are on the come up in terms of doing really, really well in the Big East. Yeah. You know, I love you guys optimism for sure. I think the key for this Seton Hall Pirates team is going to be these last few games. 
and uh, seeing if they can keep their momentum going into the Big East tournament because they're definitely more talented than, uh, say, Villanova or UConn, but they can't get complacent and just rely on that talent. You know, they've got to do the things that we've been seeing them do all season long, uh, really just dominate the pitch and, um, you know, make sure that they, they don't lose to these lesser talented teams. And uh, I also want to shout out J.P. Marin. I think he, uh, C.J. Tibbling, yeah, has a lot of the spotlight right now, and it's well-deserved, you know. Uh, he's had nine points on the season and four goals. But J.P. Marin has four assists, you know. That's, that's definitely a huge factor for this team. And, um, you know, he, he's definitely been killing it all year. He's also got two goals, and he's second on the team in points. But to keep things going with the Big East, you know, we've mentioned Seton Hall. Uh, how they were ranked 15th. Uh, We mentioned Providence a little bit, how they're um, in and out of the rankings this season. Georgetown is currently ranked second in the nation. Uh, Marquette is ranked 22nd. And St. John's has been in the top 25 earlier this year. Um, They they fell out after some poor play, uh, losing against teams like Seton Hall. But they were ranked earlier this year. Uh, And I got to ask you guys, uh, with the sheer amount of teams in the Big East that get national recognition is the big east the best conference in college soccer i have to say yes and i'm not going to lie to you ryan my soccer knowledge outside the big east is not up to par by any means but i did some research and i was looking at the top 25 teams and i didn't see another division have four or even five teams hanging around that top 25 area so much like basketball i definitely think the big east is one of the if not the best i'm gonna gonna say the best college soccer division in the nation you mentioned it georgetown Seton Hall, Providence, Marquette, all those, even St. John's sometimes, four or five teams, really solid. And it, it has, a, they, when they play each other, it has a lot of implications for not only, you know, Big East standings, but rankings nationally. And that's awesome to see. And coming to Seton Hall, I really wasn't aware of just how powerhouse soccer conference the Big East was and that Seton Hall was going to be a part of it and a really big part of it as they're only trailing Georgetown. But they, they're sure enough, they are. And this is a really, really good conference. And yeah, I think it's the best in the nation. Louis, Louis, Louis. Did you forget about the ACC? Did you forget about teams like Clemson? No. North Carolina. We want the smoke. We want the smoke. You want the smoke? Okay. So I'll tell you why the ACC is better. So they have three teams ranked in the top six. In the top six, Clemson is number one. They received 24 of the 25 first place votes. So they are a powerhouse in football, and they're also a powerhouse in soccer. You have Pittsburgh, who's also, I believe, number four in the nation. Wake Forest, number six in the nation. North Carolina, number 16 in the nation. So that's four top 16 teams. You also have Virginia receiving a lot of votes to get into this top 25. So that's five teams that are very, very good. They're borderline elite teams. Clemson, 100% elite, as well as Pittsburgh and Wake Forest. So I think if any of these teams were to come to the Big East, they would shake things up completely. I think that they may be runaway winners, apart from maybe Georgetown having a few good games here and there. I think that Clemson would roll in the Big East. I think Pitt would roll. I think Wake Forest would also roll in the Big East. I love the Big East. I love Seton Hall, but I don't think that if Seton Hall was thrown into the ACC or any of the other teams like Providence or Marquette or St. John's, they were all thrown in the ACC, they would be toward the bottom of the barrel. It's just a gauntlet, even more of a gauntlet in the ACC than it is in the Big East for soccer. I like the Big East chances at the overall tournament with the 48 teams, but I don't think that I can walk away from the show today saying that they're the best team, that they're the best league, excuse me, in all of college soccer. If Seton Hall wins these next three games, where are they ranked? Uh, If they win the next three games, they're outside the top 10. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Jimmy on this one, Louie. I'm sorry. The ACC is really good. I could even throw some, a conference like the Pac-12 in there. You know, Oregon State is ranked third. Washington is ranked fourth. Stanford is ranked ninth right now. I mean, the Big East only has three teams ranked as well, and the only team that's higher than those three is Georgetown. Um, you know, they have three teams in the top ten. That's definitely – that's scary news. That's that's scary as if – you're any other team in the conference, really. Um, I don't think the Pac-12 is necessarily better than the Big East overall, but you definitely got to throw them in there for consideration. You know, they're they're you know they're an elite conference. Um, 
in soccer and this year apparently in basketball as they just running through the tournament but that is a conversation for a different podcast but yeah I, I mean the Big East is definitely a very tough conference this year but the ACC is just kind of built different uh, they're, they're just really good I mean you mentioned it Clemson Pittsburgh Wake Forest that's three teams in the top six in the nation right there that's absolutely ridiculous um so yeah i'm gonna have to agree with jimmy not quite the best conference in college soccer but definitely a tough one to be sure and uh to round things out today i want to talk a little bit about the women's soccer team you know they they've really struggled this year so far they're they're two and six on the season but they just had a huge double overtime win against st john's their first win in big east play all year laura hooper had a brace on the day to really propel the pirates to victory and Naomi Welch also scored. In their last few games this season, the Pirates played Villanova, Providence, and UConn in what could be some, some very tough matchups for the team. Can the Pirates turn their season around with the win against St. John's? So I'm going to go back to being optimistic, Jimmy, here, and I'm going to say yes, they can 100% turn things around if they play right. So they looked pretty good against the game earlier this week against St. John's. St. John's usually has a very, very good women's soccer program. It was down a little bit this year, but they're still a very, very good program. And so the Pirates scored three goals earlier this week, which nearly matched their season total of four. So they really had a very good attacking showcase this week against the Red Storm of St. John's. Di Pietro was my woman of the match, I think, for Seton Hall. I think that she's the right back, and she had a very, very good cross that was converted by Hooper for the second goal of the game, I believe. And she just put in a bunch of really, really good crosses every single time she went up the field. Hooper as well did very well, and as did Grace Gordon. So these three players were really good. When you have somebody in net that's playing really well, somebody in your midfield that's playing well, and someone in defense that's playing very well, you're going to be in every single game that you're going to play. Grace Gordon, eight saves, Hooper, a brace, Di Pietro, an assist from right back, and was consistently putting crosses in as if she was Trent Alexander-Arnold from that right back spot, every single ball going to the head or at the feet of a pirate. So I do think that this could potentially get them back on track. I don't have too much hope for them because they only – are two and six on the season. But if they did have a game that could get them back into conversation and could kind of steer them back on course, it would be this 3-2 overtime win that they did win against uh, St. John's earlier this week. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the Big East has the defending national champion. Okay, I think that I'm going to have to be the devil's advocate here and say that I don't think that they can turn around. I would love to see that. I would love to see them make a playoff push this late in the season, but there's still a few things that I noticed with this team that kind of concern me going forward. And I think number one is the defending. In six out of eight games, they've given up two or more goals. And that's something that it's not a horrible stat, but it's not something you like to see if, if you're in the conversation for being, uh, you know, making a push late and trying to win some games late in the season. So that is a bit concerning to me. And then I had the pleasure of calling a game with the Jimmy Bliss. And on that game, we kept talking about how instead of the goal kicks going to Seton Hall players, they found St. John's players much more than they found Seton Hall players. And I was kind of concerned with that. I was a bit confused. There were times where there were Seton Hall defenders that were open, whether it be Deep Pietro or Abby Roberts or whatever the case might be. And, and Grace Gordon didn't choose to pass that. She chose to boot it up the field, kind of like a punt in football, and just, just kind of give possession away. And that's Seton Hall women's team are, is not a good enough team to just be giving possession away. I feel like they need to retain possession as much as they can. They need to have the ball at their feet more than the opposition if they want a chance at winning a game. And that is another thing that concerned me. So I, I don't think that this team is going to be able to turn it around. Again, I would love to see them do that. But because of the things that I mentioned, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, you guys both bringing up some good points. I'm really on the fence with this one, you know, because the Pirates, they definitely played better in that game than they have for the rest of the season. You know, definitely showing the fight to pull it out in double overtime. Uh, they, they've been competitive with some teams all season. I remember they had a heartbreaker against Providence earlier this year where uh, they, they 
scored a goal in the last two minutes of the game to tie it up, but it was ruled offside, uh, really wrenching the hearts out of, of the Pirates there. But, um, you know, looking at their schedule coming up, they got Providence this Sunday, um, which, like I said, they, they were very competitive with Providence the entire game. It's definitely a winnable game for them. If they can take that momentum, I don't see why they can't get a win. UConn, that is uh, – they lost 5-0 to UConn last time. They didn't lose to Georgetown that bad, and Georgetown is ranked 12th in the country. So – UConn might be a little bit of a stretch in terms of asking for a win. I'd be very happy if they got a draw out of that one because they, they, they just did not look very good against UConn last time. And then Villanova is their final regular season game of the series, uh, uh, regular season game of the season. Uh, and they're playing uh, on Thursday, no, April. All right, cut that. I just cut that. And then their last game comes up against Villanova, who uh, they lost to one to two in, I believe, overtime or double overtime. Uh, double overtime. So, you know, another double overtime game that they just couldn't quite pull out that time. But I think uh, the confidence that they gained from that St. John's double overtime win should really propel them moving forward. I don't see why they can't beat Villanova and or Providence. Uh, like I said, I'd be very happy with a draw against UConn because UConn, it, like I said before about, I believe, the ACC, they're just kind of built different right now. Um, but definitely should be fun to see how they end up on the season. And that will do it for today's episode of PTVFC, a special college soccer episode Thank you guys for joining me, Jimmy and Louie. Shout out to our producers, Mateus and Cooper. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe, wear a mask, and have a great day.